Hi and welcome back to another hack and tutorial from Stealth Data Zero. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stream the screen live with no VNC. So that means no VNC payload and that means uh, no run VNC command. That means you can stream the screen without adding any additional malware to the system other than the Meterpreter shell that you start out with. Now I made a video uh, just yesterday um, which had a couple comments on it that said uh, about how the VNC, how you can uh, see um, the movement of the screen and that is all true which I did mention in the video it's not a very stealthy attack but for someone who prefers a GUI um, interface it would be the choice for them and someone who uh, might use the web camera to see if someone's at the computer um, or the idle time command that see to see how long someone's been away from the computer you could easily use a VNC payload and uh, get what you need to do done maybe a lot faster than command line in certain situations I also mentioned that it is not a stealthy attack because the viewer on the other end can see the mouse moving and it's much more stealthy to remain in the shell and do things behind the scenes but today I'm going to show you a command that will allow you to stream the screen live without the VNC payload or the run VNC command so let's go ahead and get ourselves a interpreter session we're going to do service PostgreSQL start service Apache to start and then MSF console. Now, uh, before we proceed, uh, this video is for Hackathon, Book of Wisdom, and Scott Reynolds, as they were the main commenters um, saying about uh, how it wasn't stealthy, which was all points that I had made in the video, um, but I guess they didn't watch the video and they failed to realize that. So let's go ahead and uh, show you guys how you can run the screen, um, stream it live. Um, you cannot control it like the VNC payload, like I showed you in last video, I showed you how to control it uh, with the VNC payload, but you can stream the screen live without adding any additional malware to the system. So let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, we're gonna need a multi-handler, of course. So use multi-slash handler. And then of course, we're going to need a payload. Um, so for this, we're, I would normally suggest um, using something like Hack the World, Phantom Evasion, uh, Unicorn, something a lot less detectable. But um, since we're just doing a demo here, we are going to just use a basic um, encrypted and encoded MSF Venom H reverse HTTPS uh, payload. So let's go ahead and generate a uh, reverse HTTPS payload. So we're just going to name it encoded and encrypted exe for the test it's going to be saved in our uh, apache folder right away which is slash var slash ww and then slash html that way we don't have to move the payload um, you would want to use your public ip address and of course you can find this all out on my uh videos on msf venom and i'm not going to go over it too deeply but if you use your public uh IP address here um, and port forward port 443 or whatever port you choose to, uh, you can do this remotely or you can check out my ngrock videos um, and see how to use ngrock to uh, hack remotely so we're going to do reverse HTTPS it's just more professional um, it keeps you a lot more anonymous and it helps block uh, antivirus and eavesdroppers now I'm not saying this payload is anywhere near FUD. Um, MSF Venom is widely used and in almost every single database uh, for malware that you can think of. So we're going to do Windows slash Meterpreter. 
slash reverse HTTPS, the platform windows architecture x86, lhost, which is going to be our, our internal IP address. If we hit ifconfig, we could find that number there. And we're good to go. Uh, it has 15 layers of Shikata Ganai encoding, and the encryption we're going to be using is AES 256 bit encryption. So this payload will be encoded and encrypted, um, but it's just a basic HTTPS, reverse HTTPS payload. So we're going to go ahead and let that generate. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up our Apache server just to make sure it generates. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And then we'll go ahead and worry about setting up our multi-handler. So we want to set our payload as the same payload we did when generating our payload, if that makes sense. So reverse Windows interpreter, reverse HTTPS, Set L port the same port. This just means local port. And normally I would add encoding to my uh, multi handler, which I'll show you guys how to do. So set enabled staged encoding true. This will encode your stager. We'll set uh, the type of encoding Shikata Ganai. Architecture x86. We'll set how many times, which is alliterations, 10. And we need to set our L host, which is always our internal IP address, unless it's 0.0.0.0, .0 or we have some other configuration. So if we go ahead and hit the set tab, we can see all of our options are set here. Our uh, staged encoding is true. We have our type of encoding, how many layers, and our payload type, and we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and hit exploit tack J, which makes it a job. So I'll run in the background. That means you can take multiple connections in at once. So let's say you have five payloads out and all five payloads come to your computer, come to your network, you will actually be able to receive all five shells instead of just hitting exploit and uh, starting a new multi-handler and uh, gaining shell after shell after shell that way. So we can see that our payload is generated. If we go to our file, we can see that it's inside of our Apache server, which is other other locations, computer www or var www and then HTML. So we can now use our internal IP address of uh, 192.168.1.248 uh, uh, and any browser on our LAN and download the payload. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go to a Windows 10 host machine just for demo purposes. And then as you can see, we're getting a reverse HTTPS multi-handler. The HTTPS obviously means it's encrypted with the HTTPS protocol, um, which is always good uh, as a pen tester. Uh, you want to get used to using HTTPS for multiple reasons. So now that our session is open, we can go ahead and enter. We can type sessions. We can see what sessions we have with the session ID of one. We can see that our sessions open here. Uh, so we can do sessions. Tac I1. And it will open up that session. We could do sys info. And see that we are inside of the machine of course after you have the interpreter shell you know you're inside but the sysinfo command is normally a good sign for me what I use to just test the shell and uh, see how good it's running now if you notice uh, Metasploit has done a few updates now you can do things like uh, screen share which is what we're going to be talking about here watch the users uh, desktop in real time um, 
but you can also do things like key log, uh, send mouse events, so you can actually uh, move the mouse around. You can capture keystrokes. Uh, you could even disable the uh, the keyboard itself. So depending on how aggressive or stealthy you want to be, um, it's up to you. And that's what I mentioned in the last video with the VNC viewer. It's a very aggressive payload because you can see what they're doing. But if you want to go in and disable the mouse, disable the keyboard, and just go in and do what you're going to do anyways, you can do that. Now, the more practical approach is to remain inside the shell and do everything in the background but i wanted to show you guys different ways uh to approach a scenario as any good pen tester would so you can use the command idle time to see how long someone's been at the computer uh so you can actually see if someone's in front of the computer um, or not and this will tell you how long so it's been uh, idle for three minutes then you can also do things like look at the webcam to see if someone's in front of the computer and this is a great idea if you're using the VNC viewer payload to make sure no one's in front of the computer so like I said you could use the command idle time to see how long someone's been in front of the computer or how the long the computer has been active. You can also use a webcam snap to see if anyone's in front of the computer as well. And that would be very, very important uh, to someone using a VNC viewer that doesn't want to get caught. But here is the command that we came to see, this screen share command. So let's go ahead and run this command. And this is how you can view the screen without adding any additional malware onto the system. And I believe it doesn't even add another process to the system. So if you migrate processes, this will all be hidden inside of that process. So it's a very stealthy way to watch the screen. Um, and it's an alternative to the VNC viewer uh, payload. So as you can see, we have the screen here. Uh, I'm going to move the mouse around. And as you can see, uh, you can see the screen in real time. So there's a little tiny bit of lag at first. Um, that's to be expected until it catches up, especially uh, depending on latency issues. But if I was to go ahead and open up the command prompt, you could go ahead and see that. Uh, you could see me closing programs. You could see me clicking the command prompt right here. Um, of course, I can't control it like the VNC viewer, but as you can see, here's the pr command prompt open. I'm gonna go ahead and close the command prompt open up the browser and as you can see uh, you guys can see all of this live stream uh, right uh, as it's happening so right here is the browser opening back up and again there is a little bit of a lag but you know that's to be expected um, but yeah that is how you can view the screen uh, without the VNC viewer um, and again when using the VNC viewer payload check uh, commands like idle time do things like uh, webcam snaps to make sure no one's in front of the computer but um, also you can use these commands to see if anyone's using the computer in general before you go ahead and do what you need to do now I'll make uh, more videos but if you check out my Windows post exploitation video the full interpreter guide I break down on how to uh, disable the keyboard how to clear the event viewer how to change the registry, uh, how to get persistence, um, all of those things that you would need to do uh, when actually getting into a machine and what you should do first when you get into the machine. So hopefully you found this video informative. If you did, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe for more content, and as always, have fun, stay safe, keep hacking. Peace out.